Crystal Palace 0-1 Chelsea, N'Golo can't grab second half winner at Sellerst Park. For Chelsea manager Maurizio Sarri, the vindication lay in the winning goal. This match was won in a rare instance where two players elevated themselves above the mundane and they did so in a way that consolidates faith in Sarri's system. Camped inside the Crystal Palace half, Chelsea slowly built up the play, pulling Palace here and there, waiting for their moment. To Sarri's critics, these periods can be too slow and ponderous. Yet centre-half David Luiz made the vital contribution, lifting his head, picking his pass and flighting a sublime pass over the top. And here came Sarri's crowning moment. N'Golo Kane sprinted in from the outside right position, on the inside of Patrick Van Anhalt, and chested the ball down with composure before rifling in the finish. This is what Sarri imagines can't to be capable of and it was a shot in the arm for those who believe the Frenchman is being wasted in his remolded position this season. For Sarri, the goal had broader significance. Chelsea had lost three Premier League games since late November but back-to-back -back away wins at Watford and Crystal Palace ensure a five-point gap over fifth-placed Arsenal and the Italian can look to the new year with confidence. This was not a swashbuckling Chelsea display and, in truth, it rarely has been under Sarri. In fairness to the Italian, he had been forced to shuffle his pack due to injuries. Having deployed Eden Hazard as a centre-forward for the previous four Premier League games, injuries to Pedro, Callum Hudson-Odoi and Ruben Loftus-Cheek meant a return to the left flank for the Belgian and Olivier Giroud stepped in as the lone frontman. Alvaro Morata, left out altogether at Watford returned to the bench and replaced the injured Giroud in the second period. Crystal Palace. 4-3-3, Guaita 6, Wan-Bissaka 6.5, Tomkins 6, Sacco 6, Van Anhalt 5, Milivojevic, C, 6, MacArthur 5.5, Kalyate 5.5, Meyer 78, Townsend 5.5, Zaha 6, Schliab 5, Wickham 69, 6, Substitutes not used, Hennessy, G.K., Ward, Dan, U, Punchin Manager, Roy Hodgson 5.5 Chelsea, 4-3-3, Capes 6, Azpilicueta, C, 7, Rudiger 6, Louise 7.5, Alonso 6, Kant 7.5, Georgino 5.5, Barkley 7, Kavakic 88, Willian 7, Emerson 82. Giroud 5.5, Morata 76, Hazard 6 substitutes not used, Caballero, GK, Zapacosta, Christensen, Ampadu manager, Maurizio Sarri 7 scorer, Kent 51 booked, Alonso referee, Craig Paulson 6 yet for vast swathes of this game, too much of Chelsea's play was ordinary and Kent's 51st minute goal did not appear to be coming. The first half was, for the most part, Low on quality and opportunities were scarce. Noon kickoffs rarely bring the thrills, and over half an hour passed by before either goalkeeper had a save to make. It was a period that exposed the enduring weaknesses of two teams overly reliant on their star individuals. Crystal Palace's game plan seemed to hinge on holding out and hoping Wilfried Zaha might provide the inspiration, while Chelsea's possession was too often slow. Yet again, they seemed to be waiting for Eden Hazard to do something, anything, to make the difference. There were signs of touchiness in this Chelsea performance early on. When the cross-field pass skipped up and eluded Marco Alonso, the Spaniard picked up the ball and forearmed it into the ground to pick up a needless booking. Chelsea were unusually careless in possession, with Louise and Giorgino both gifting the ball to the opposition at different junctures. A more ambitious side than Palace might have sensed the angst and capitalized. Instead, Palace remained penned in, content to contain and frustrate Chelsea. Palace have now failed to score in seven of their Premier League home games this season and have only five home goals to their name. It is a miserable record and one that will keep them in a relegation battle rather than looking upwards to mid-table. Hodgson is admired and respected on the terraces but the crowd did become frustrated by Palace's refusal to press higher up the pitch, even after falling behind. Late in the first half, Chelsea finally raised themselves and struck the woodwork twice in quick succession. 
William whipped a delightful free kick against the outside of the post and he then fired hard and low from distance to test Guida. From the resultant corner, Ross Barkley adroitly hooked an effort against the post. Barkley was making his first Premier League start since the reverse fixture between these two sides at Stamford Bridge at the start of November and the England international excelled. His directness troubled Palace and he showed defensive awareness when tracking back to slide in on Zaha and prevent the Palace forward a rare shot on goal. After Kent's opener, Willian came close once more, bringing another fine Guida save and Barkley's follow-up was deflected wide. Hodgson sought to inject life into his team from the substitutes bench, as Connor Wickham and Max Meyer arrived. Luke Milivojevic at least provided some bite, lunging a foot high into Willian's midriff. The collision did not bring a free kick when other officials might have produced a card. In the closing moments, Palace provided a set-piece threat as Wickham blasted over from a James Tompkins knockdown but as the final whistle blew. The home side were still to force a single save from Chelsea goalkeeper Kepa Arizabalaga.